Good morning, it's Brenda Quintana here and I am live from my Beehive studio this morning. Um, it is a beautiful sunny day today. It's going to be hot here in Boston and um, yeah, it's uh, going to be a great day. Um, so today is Casing Tuesday and it's the day when we uh, take a card out of the Stampin' Up! catalog we choose it and we all work on it to give it a makeover. And by we, I mean I have um, my um, the person who originally started it, which is Catalina, one of um, my downline. And then we have a group of bloggers and we all work on the same card and uh, give it a makeover. So it's kind of fun and it's fun too because if you want to join in, you can join in too. We have a Facebook group for that. Uh, just look down in the description of this video. There's a link right to the Facebook group if you click on it and um, answer the one question that we ask you when you join the group very easy question, um, then you can uh, join our group and if you want to, you can participate in it. And at the very least, you'll be able to see our challenges each week and you'll be able to see how we can take one card and turn it into a card that has many different renditions, so to speak. Um, some people use a different stamp set, some people use different colors. It is just about taking a card that's existing already and turning it into something different. So I uh, love this challenge and that's why I do it every uh, week. So um, while we're waiting for, for people to jump on here, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, uh, I kind of do a little preamble at the beginning. If you don't want to hear the preamble, if you want to just get to the card making, if you're on YouTube, you can fast forward ahead. If you're watching this live, you can't do that. But I am just waiting for a few people to pop on so uh, I can have you here live in case you have any questions. So I'll just tell you what's going on in my life this week until we um, have a, a minute or two to go by. Um, so this week, um, it's the last week of August and it is my son's birthday coming up and he is turning 18. I don't know how this happened. I remember bringing him home from the hospital. I remember taking him to school each year and now he's turning 18 and going into his senior year. So that's really, we're going to have a, uh, an adult, so to speak, I guess, uh, in the, in the family. And, um, it's, it's so, I, I don't know. It's really cool to have watched him grow up and get to this point. So, it's it's really neat. We have this senior year with him and next year, I don't know where he'll go. He'll go off probably somewhere to college. Maybe he'll go locally. Maybe he'll go away. We don't know yet. Um, but it's nice to kind of watch him on his journey. And uh, so it's, it's kind of exciting. And I know it's um, for him, you know, he's taking it very seriously this year, um, the whole college application process and stuff. And uh, it's so cool to see that whole process, but that's what's happening in my life. We'll be celebrating his birthday this weekend. So exciting, exciting. All right, I think we need to get to, to some stamping. And um, so I'm gonna turn the camera around. So close your eyes if you get dizzy, just give me a second. All right, there's my view this morning. Um, it is sunny and it's going to be a hot day today. I'm going to bring this around here. Okay, so, okay, the card that we're casing today, it's a nice, easy card. I picked this card, it was my turn to pick, and I picked one that had a really, really defined layers and I hope all my bloggers um, found this card easy to do um, because some of the cards we've done lately have been a little bit more involved and um, this one you can see it's got a nice big focal point layer it's got this little layer back here and that's got the card base and uh, just a little bit of ribbon running down the side I like this layout a lot it's just really pretty and easy so I decided to do this card with it. 
I used the exact same base colors of the mossy meadow and the soft sea foam, but I went a little bit brighter with my focal point. I used the abstract impression stamp set, and this is kind of it's not a very controlled stamp set. I I have to admit that it's taking me a little bit. I love the idea of this stamp set, but I, I'm having trouble controlling it, so that's my my um, drawback with it. But I'm learning how to use it, and I love this. I mean, this is just so pretty and kind of free for all, so it's good. I'm getting out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to show you how to stamp these flowers so it creates this kind of whoosh of flowers. And look at the greeting. If flowers were hugs, I'd send you a thousand. So I like the whole idea of kind of um, flowers kind of just like randomly all over the place that kind of um, speaks well to the the greeting so I did this one in Calypso Coral and Poppy Parade and I thought today okay we could be boring and do the same thing but let's try some different colors and you can tell me which one you like best and we'll finish off the card with that color so um, this focal point layer is a simple three inches by four inches. How easy is that? I'm going to, I've got, I cut myself some extra layers today because I thought, hey, let's just go for it. Let me see if I can get these all on the camera. So we're going to kind of go along and stamp all of these at once. So for my greeting, I'm using Mossy Meadow. And we'll keep that the same. It's This is a nice thing, uh, what I try to do with a lot of my cards, is if you keep your background neutral, you can sub in colors. So that's a, a cool thing. So let's go ahead and just kind of stamp this down at the bottom. We're gonna do this four times. But this also shows you how you could like mass produce these cards if you wanted to. You just kind of cut your same layer over and over again. And let's see. All right, so we've got four layers. I can't put my mossy meadow too far away. Then we're gonna come in, I'm gonna use garden green for the darker part of this is kind of a two-step um a process to create um the greenery for the flowers so the one that has more um more greenery is going to be in garden green so just a little bit of a contrast i don't know if garden green was the best color to match with mossy meadow but it works, so I'm just going to kind of stamp that right above. Doesn't have to be precise. I'm in the process of replacing my ink pads, and I, the garden green is still one of my older ink pads. Are you guys replacing your ink pads with the newer ones? I am. I'm going through, I'm doing it gradually though, because I didn't want to spend all my money on just getting ink pads. So I'm just gradually over the next few months replacing them. So by the, by the turn of the year, I will have them all replaced. Um, but I've got about, hmm, I think I've maybe 12 more to go. I also replaced the reinkers at the same time. I know I'm a bit, bit of a control freak. Okay. <laughs> now, now I've got, um, the smaller greenery part and I'm going to do that in mossy meadow. So I am not lining it up with anything in particular, maybe just the base. So I'm just coming in and just adding this to the base. All right, that was pretty easy. And then, now we need to decide on colors. So, all right, how about we do some purples? Highland Heather and um, Gorgeous Grape. 
So we've got these two. They're like a two um, step as well. Let me see if I can move them out of the way. They've got a little staining on them from the coral. Um, but you've got this one. Let me ink it up. I'll show it to you. This is um, Highland Heather. I'm going to ink it up in the lighter color. So when I hold this over, see this this one, it's kind of got um, um, dots with uh, holes in it. So now let me remember how I did this. It was like this. All right, so I'm bringing this down here like this. And let me see, I think I've got it. Yeah, just about there like that. So I've got this piece kind of coming up like that and then I'm turning it. So I've got it this way and then I turn it and I nest it in here like this. And that's how I get that kind of that higher look rather than the lower look. You can also do a lower a look to it. Um, so, okay, so that's the first part. And then this is kind of the shading part. Um, it's got like smaller. See, now you can see it a little better. So now I just have to make sure I turn this. And now this part, you can kind of hover it over and hover it over the flowers and it will have kind of a darker part to it. And then I need to turn it, hopefully not drop it onto my project. Have you ever done that? Have you ever dropped it onto your project while you were doing it? Not in the right spot. <laughs> I've done that. So there's the purple. So that's like got a different sort of look to it. You can add a, um, a little bit of greenery. There's this little tiny greenery piece. So if you've got some bald patches, you can come in and kind of like maybe add just a little bit of green to kind of connect a few more of the flowers if you want to do that. And then, okay, so let's let that, um, that's my purples. So on the Calypso Coral, I think this is a little bit more on tone on tone. I did Calypso Coral and Poppy Parade. So this one looks has a little bit more contrast to it. So now let me clean off my stamp. So this is the way I'm cleaning things right now. I've got my stamp and scrub, and then I got my chamois. So I kind of get some of the ink off on the scrub side, and I've replaced one of my scrubber pieces. And now I just use that with my stamping chamois and I, I just use that to kind of really clean off the ink. The stampin' chamois really removes that ink so you don't have any more of that, um, see a little bit of ink on my block, um, so you don't have that um, kind of, I don't know, even off the stampin' scrub you used to get just a little bit of discoloration still on your stamp and now it completely cleared it off. Okay, so now let's try yellows. Let's do Daffodil Delight and Crush Curry. How about? I've not attempted these color combinations before, so some of them might not be that great. We will see. So let's go ahead and do this again. Hopefully I'll be an expert by the end, right? So I just want to make sure I kind of have it going the same way. And then come in like this getting a little faster and then the crushed curry come in and hover 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 make sure it's kind of over top of the existing flowers that's not too bad and then let's turn this all right and welcome to everyone that's joined me. Um, so, okay, so that is the yellow. Hmm, I like the yellow. That's cool. So now let me just, I'm gonna clean this off camera because you already saw my cleaning process. You know what I'm doing now. All right, I've just got some on the block here. Get that off. All right. So now let's see, does anyone have a color combination suggestion for me? They want to see what I would like to try. Or if you don't know the colors, the Stampin' Up! colors, just like type what 
color like you know just like yellows or purples but I've already done yellow or purple um, I'm gonna pick one more color combination you guys can pick the last one how about oh I know what we're gonna do we're gonna do mango melody we're gonna do an orange one and we're gonna do I think mango melody and pumpkin pie we'll do that it's kind of a little bit like yellow um, I'm trying to decide which one is lighter, Mango Melody or Pumpkin Pie. I think Mango Melody is a little lighter. So let's go with that one first. And let's see. Okay. Trying to line it up like I had it. I love Mango Melody. I'm not really a big orange girl, but oh my gosh, Mango Melody makes me smile. Isn't that pretty? It's such a pretty orange. Okay, now let me um, grab my pumpkin pie. Hopefully pumpkin pie is a little darker. I haven't worked with oranges too much yet since we got them. Um, I find orange for me is kind of a fall color, so I haven't used them too much yet. But I've started to use Mango Melody because it's a nice um, summer color as well. Oh yeah, that's good. That is good. Mango Melody and Pumpkin Pie look good together. All right, I'm just kind of lining this up. Ooh, that's pretty, pretty. Okay, so let's see. Okay, someone's saying blues. Okay, let's see, blues, blues, blues. Okay, I think the blues have it. Okay, we'll do blues next. All right, let me clean these off. And we'll do some blues. Yeah, I can see that. Like, I don't know, bluebells. Let's do some blues. Okay. All right, let me think. What blue are we going to do? So we could do either like a green blue or we could do like a blue blue. We could do either like blueberry bushel and pacific point might look nice together that would be like a darker blue combination or we could do um i'm trying to think we could do pool party and coastal cabana kind of for like a green blue i think i'm gonna go with a darker blue I think I think it's some more natural color. Okay, so I think Pacific Point might be lighter. I'm hoping Pacific Point is lighter than Blueberry Berry Bushel. We'll have to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll test this out. We'll test out my theory whether or not I guessed right. Okay, so I'm gonna stick that up there. That's really pretty. Really, really pretty. Okay, and lining that up. All right, and then finally, let me grab the blueberry bushel. Isn't this looking like a nice card set? I wish I had cut card bases for all of them now. So, did I clean that off? Um, stamping that off. All right. Mm, I hope blueberry bushel is darker. I think it is. Yes, I guess correctly. See, with all these new colors, I haven't used them all together yet with two-step stamping, so I don't know which one should be the darker color and which one. Ooh, that is so pretty. Okay, let me move these stamps off to the side because I'm going to get them all over me. So I can come in now with my little tiny green piece. Maybe I'll do it in in garden green because I found that the um, this one looked a little dark so let's come in with garden green instead except my garden green is not very inky right now there's that just adding a little bit of greenery in those bald spots. Okay. I like it. All right. Okay, so now we have a decision to make. 
which one of these is going to go on to the card. Okay, you guys have to let me know which one do you want on the card. We've got oranges, blues, purples, or yellows. We've got to pick one because I've only cut one card base. So while you are telling me which one you want, I'm going to tell you what the card base is. So I've got a mossy meadow card base. It's a half a sheet of cardstock cut to 11 inches by four and a quarter inches and scored in half at the five and a half inch mark. I have got a piece of soft sea foam. And this one is, I've forgotten the measurement. It's on my blog, so if you want to know all the measurements of the different layers that I use today, just click on the link to my blog and I have the measurements there. But I didn't write them down, so this one's four and three quarters by one and a half. Okay, so that's the little layer we have here. And then we've got some linen thread that we need to tie around this. So let's just move this off to the side for a moment. Let's do our tying of the linen thread. So I'm just kind of measuring, the way I measure if I'm wrapping around a layer is I just kind of wrap it around and then have a look. I need enough, enough to tie a bow. So just kind of give yourself enough to do that. And then I'm just going to wrap this around um where are my locking tweezers you know me and my locking tweezers I, need them. I actually have two pairs okay here's my little guys so this morning my internet went down <laughs> And I was like, I called into my internet provider and I was like, okay, when will this come back up? You know, they have an automated message and uh, they are like, it will be back up at 1230 today. And, and I'm on Eastern Standard Time and I'm like, really, are you kidding me? So I almost had to like move this Facebook Live, but I thought usually they're better at getting it up faster than um, anything. So I, I just kind of waited and they did get it up before my Facebook Live. Um, but this morning I was like trying to get stuff done. And of course, you know, you have um, different things that come into your way. So, all right, I'm just tying a little bow. The locking tweezers just help um, keep that um, first knot locked down so that when you go to tie um, the bow, um, you don't have to kind of pin that knot down. It stays nice um, to the um, nice and flush with your cardstock. So I'm just kind of heat pressing with my fingers the linen thread to make it go straight. It had a bit of a bend in it. Have you ever had that happen? So I just kind of, <laughs> I'm doing ironing with my fingertips on my linen thread. But see, I managed to get a little bit of the kink going out of it. And then you can just kind of cut the ends okay and then we need to add this to the card base so I'm gonna use some Tombow for that Tombow is my go-to glue it sticks things down really well unless you have something shiny it doesn't hold down ribbon well but it sticks card um, stock really well and it sticks it so well sometimes that if you ever want to pry it apart for some reason you didn't like something um, and that doesn't work so well so it's kind of more of a thing if you if you are committed to your card use Tombow if you're not committed to your card use a lighter adhesive like snail <laughs> um, I am committed to this card design all right Okay, so now I need to find out from you guys what, let's, let's have a look. Let me scroll up. Okay, so, okay, they are so pretty. So I've got a lot of purples, purple, 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 okay. Um, uh, someone, Renee said, I think I need to stop watching these on Tuesday because you're making me want sets I don't need. <laughs> That's funny. 
All right, I had like a lot of purple. So I'm gonna do the purple one. And I'm sorry if I didn't pick your color, but um, I had a lot of purples. Um, so let's go with the purple. It's not that the other colors aren't worthy, they are. In fact, I think I might make them into cards because this is just such a nice, easy card. And it's such, I love the greeting. If flowers were hugs, I'd send you a thousand. Isn't that nice? I love that. It's kind of like all occasion, right? So there's the finished card. And of course, I could have done it in yellow. I could have done it in blue. But I think you guys were right. I think purple's nice. I also like this um, orange color. That's nice and bright. And then my original card is here. Oh, one other thing I did. Uh, I took a few rhinestones. Where's my paper piercing tool? And I just added them to a few of the flowers. Let me pick this up here. I added three. I, I usually do things in odd numbers. And that just gives a little bit of sparkle to the card. So when the, the person, the recipient gets it, it like catches the light a little bit. And they're like, oh, so pretty. Or you could go over the flowers with, um, with your Wink of Stella. That's another thing you could do. Just hit the flowers with a little bit of Wink of Stella. It doesn't show up that well on camera, but when, when the person gets it and they're under a light or in daylight, it really shines and shimmers. So sometimes I add just Wink of Stella. I forget to talk about it when I'm on my videos because it's not really that impressive on videos because it just doesn't catch the light as well as it does in person. But um, that's another thing you can do. But you can see, let me see if I can get these little rhinestones to sparkle a little bit. There we go. Um, so you can see it just catches the light a little bit and it just takes a few seconds to add um, a few extra rhinestones. So those are the cards today. This is such a good layout for beginners, right? Because it's, you know, really easy. You really can't go wrong. You could put designer series paper back here or even back here if you wanted to, but the layout itself, if you don't have a lot of supplies, you could probably make this card because you've probably got some cardstock, you've got an ink and a stamp set. This is a nice, easy thing. It doesn't require die cutting if you don't want to. It's just nice and easy. So I love how those came together. Now, before I sit down, I'm gonna scroll back a little bit and see if there were any comments or questions I needed to address. And then um, I will turn the camera back around. Hello, everyone. Um, some people are joining me from Canada, yay. Um, if you don't know, oh, and someone from Massachusetts where I'm at, that's cool. Oh, and um, Janine said um, she likes my idea with the stamping chamois. Yeah, this is kind of cool because um, I just popped out, these these things come out, they just, you can kind of see here, they're pinned in here and you can kind of pry them up. Um, if you have trouble prying them up, try this corner up here where it's indented a little bit and pry up from there. And you can get your um, your um one of your Stampin' Scrub pieces out. And then I put my Stampin' Chamois um, on the other side. Every morning when I come to stamp, I need to like run this underwater to kind of give it a little bit of water. You don't wanna close up your Stampin' Chamois, otherwise it gets, um, it gets moldy, but you just let it air dry and then it gets, if you leave it for a few days, it gets hard again. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, run it underwater again and it will soften up again. But this is so great for getting off that residual ink. Now, some of your stamps will stain, like the photopolymer does stain, but the staining doesn't matter. It matters like getting the the top, the top of the ink off so that it's clean for the next color of ink. Um, and your stamping chamois will also get really grungy and gross, um, but um, don't let that deter you. Like it is absorbing the ink and that's the nice thing. It is absorbing the ink into the chamois so it's no longer on your stamp. This um, side here gets um, some of the, um, the ink off to start off with though. So I kind of like using that in combination. Okay. I'm blabbing, I'm blabbing. Okay, let's see. Okay, lots of colors, 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 colors. Um, okay, yep, yep, yep. 
Okay, what measurements for the white stamp piece? Okay, just it's three inches by four inches, which is a really easy dimension. But if you didn't catch my measurements, all of my measurements, just go to my blog. The link is in the description of this video. Um, but this is a nice easy layer, three by four. That's really easy. And this one was one and a half by four and three quarters. Um, and then it's just a regular medium card base. Um, let me go back. Oh, someone's from Northern Alberta. Cool. I love that. So I'm from British Columbia originally. So Alberta and British Columbia are our neighboring provinces. So that's really cool. Okay, let me turn you guys around. All right. Okay, I'm back. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you'll join us over on the Casing Tuesday Facebook group. And if you're not on there already, just ask to join. It's very easy. The link is in the description of this video. And then you can join in and see the cards that we've made this week. And you can also join in and share your card with us. We're going to try and keep things um, now. So if you're posting your card, Find the thread for this week and post it under that thread because that way we keep all of our cards together and that's a great way for everyone to see the cards that that we're doing for that particular week but I really challenge you this week to try this layout because it's nice and easy to start off with and so I think you'll you will really like this layout so anyway, I hope you guys have a great week and I will be back here next Tuesday. That's the start of school for my son and for a lot of kids. A lot of kids have already gone back to school, but up here in Massachusetts, a lot of the schools don't start till after Labor Day. So it's um, back to school next Tuesday and back to Casing Tuesday for me. And so I hope you guys all have a great week. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.